Yes, sir. Lord God, the Father, this <coughs> ask you to bless this time, Lord God, in your word. Lord, that you help us, help me, Lord God. Let everything be truthful and honoring to the Lord Jesus Christ and not the flesh. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. 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 Alright, so the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We're going to be stalled on this verse for a little bit. Verse 12. And with, with verse 12, we've been looking at the Christian, who we are. And we talked about the sons of God. We talked about the bride of Christ last week. Mm -hmm. And this has everything to do with verse 12. Because the Bible says, But as many as received him, I received him. To, him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's where we started. Went from the sons of God to the bride of Jesus Christ. Even to them that believe on his name. And we're looking right now is what happens when you receive Christ. What happens when you have believed on him. And today we're going to look at event in the church age. Is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. We're going to look at the rapture. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. We're the children of God. We're the bride of Christ. We're children by receiving Christ, the adoption of the Father. We talked about who God the Father is. We talked about the bride. And the next great event, besides itchy-eared preachers and all that other nonsense that's going to happen in the church, the next great event going to happen is not the tribulation period. It's the rapture. And there are false teachings out there that the church will go through the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. Then you violate what we're going to study today. Yeah, there are raptures in the tribulation period, but the church is already gone. We go before the tribulation. Now, will the temple be built? While we're here, I don't know. Is the Antichrist going to be in power, in government form while we're here? I don't know. How soon after the, after the rapture does the tribulation period start? I don't know. But the next great event in the church period is chapter 4, verse 13. And this is written to a bunch of Christians in Thessalonica. But I, Paul... Would not have you to be ignorant. Paul does not want you not to know what we're talking about. This is for all Christians. Common knowledge. Brethren. See? Those that are saved. Concerning them which are asleep. Who have died. As a Christian, the Bible doesn't really mention death. When you die as a Christian, you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. Now, if you're in a bed and you've got your family around you at home or in a hospital, that moment when you take your final breath, the final eyes, you close upon your family and you open them upon Jesus Christ. Your body will be put in a grave or cremated or whatever it be, but your soul and your spirit has returned to God. And I'm not talking about unsaved people. I'm talking about Christians. We will go from this body, our soul, to be with God. The body sleeps in the grave. It's sleeping. It's laying down. And you never notice that in a, in a coffin today, they give it a pillow. They give it nice satin. Why do they do that? You're dead. You're not feeling it. Now, before I was saved, I used to be afraid of death that you were still alive in that coffin. And then he goes, I don't know, because, but even as a saved person, you look in there, there's a pillow. Well, what do you need a pillow for? Because the Bible says your body's asleep. And they don't even, you go up to any funeral director and say, why do you put a pillow in there? You're not comforting them. And I've watched them at the service, you know, fluff up the pillow for the body and all that. Because the Bible says asleep, that's why they do it. You follow the Bible no matter what. So, if we were to die in the Lord, we sleep. It is wrong for a Christian or anybody to talk about a Christian as that, oh, I'm sorry you lost them. I'm not lost. If I've been a true Christian, my family knows where I am. 
My friends know who I am. They may not yeah. believe, but they know. But the, the thing is, why do they say word loss? I'm sorry for your loss. Because my jury, the people are going to go through the, the broad way, which leads to hell and destruction. But the Christian, the few that enter the straight gate, we don't die. We'll, we'll be Amen. in heaven at that moment if the, rapture, if the rapture has not happened. So the Bible calls our death asleep. That ye sorrow not. Now that does not mean you boo-hoo when someone has died. And when I had a very fond loved one of mine die, I had people tell me, you ought not be crying. You're a man of God. You're supposed to be... I, I, I can't believe some of the idiots I see mm. of a death. And what that sorrow not is there is don't go in depression. If you're saved, they were saved, it's a hope. It's the blessed hope, Titus 2.13. You can cry over it. Listen, I, I still miss my, dad, my, my, my ones that have gone on. Yeah. I still weep for those. I'm for sure or not sure they're in hell today. But don't in go into depression. That's worse. That's not healthy. That's what happened with the bird on there is hope for a Christian. That's what he's saying. Even as others which have no hope. So see, there it is. There are people who are in depression, especially those who are in religion, from a dead one. Because, oh, I go to this church, I do this. Uh, uh, you know, we involved. I don't know where my husband is. I don't know where my wife is. I don't know where my children are. I don't know where auntie is. But when a Christian written to brethren, we know, and Paul is saying, guess what? I'm going to tell you where they go. There's hope. For if we believe, oh, here we go, and then this is John 1. For if we believe that Jesus died, and I have, say people have, and rose again, there's the gospel, death, burial, and resurrection. And I'm not going to get try not to get the lost people, but here are people who believe the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day, according to scriptures. You also find this in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13 about salvation. The death and the burial. It's not that Jesus is nailed to the cross. He came out of the empty tomb. Rose again, even so them also that believed in the death, burial, and resurrection, which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. So there's a hope in death. And that's believing on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's hope. That's what we preach. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, here's the word, here's the Bible, here's the word of God, that, which, that we which are alive, here we are, we're alive today. We're breathing. And remain. We're not in heaven. We're living, breathing, trying to do what God wants us to do. Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In case that body in a coffin that is sealed and vacuum tight and put into a concrete pit and put six feet of dirt on top, you're not stopping that body. Put it into an incinerator where they come just become just ashes. And take those ashes out in the middle of the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. Dump those ashes in, into the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. You're not going to stop Christians even upon death. Matter of fact, when the Catholic Church was killing Christians, they, they did the Christians more good favor. Well, you did. You bring them to Christ Jesus quicker. And gave them a crown of martyrship. That's why we're not to fear death. Because if they kill us, we go to be with the Lord and you bury this wretched body. And grow worms. So, we're not going to stop other Christians. Though Christians have tried to stop Christians. For the Lord himself, that's Jesus, shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, I don't know if we're going to hear that. But probably, I don't know if the lost world is going to hear that. But there's going to be a shout and Jesus Christ is going to step away from the throne again. Yes, sir. As he did. When he was born in Bethlehem. Okay? Amen. So Christ is coming down again. 
descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel. Now, as far as we know in the Bible, there's only one archangel. That's Michael. Gabriel is not listed as an archangel, though he's named. But there's one archangel, as far as we know. If there's another, he's not named, it's not mentioned. So Christ is coming with the mark, with the mark, with the archangel, and with the trump of God. And a lot of people today think that's Donald Trump. And I'm not laughing, because they do. Mm -hmm. They're quoting Nehemiah today and yesterday that we, why we should build this wall. They're now perverting scriptures. For, they, well, they've been doing it for Donald yeah. Trump. But the trump, it doesn't say trumpet. Notice that. It says the trump, a sound. Again, I don't know if we're going to hear that sound. And what we're going to look at in a few moments, I don't want to get you scared. Paul is giving us a warning. There's going to be a shout. We might hear it. There's going to be a trump. We might hear it. Because there's a warning coming up. The trump of God, not Jesus, of God. Almost like Exodus 20 when there's thunders and lightnings, loud trumpets. And the dead, all right, here's dead. That's the body. The dead body. The souls are asleep with, with God. And this is where they'll get into the Jehovah Witness soul sleep. No, your body's dead. I know. You are living with Jesus Christ, body, uh, soul spirit. and spirit. spirit but your body. Look down in that thing. There's the body. You're not there. You're either in heaven by Jesus Christ, you're in hell by anything and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the body's dead. There's the dead body. And dead in Christ shall rise first. Now that's interesting. At the rapture. <coughs> the dead bodies will rise. As Christ's body rose. As Lazarus' body came out of that tomb, about, about floating almost. If you read, if you read uh, John chapter 11, that body couldn't walk. Amen. Now, I'm going to raise these possibilities that we don't know. If you're at the graveyard, and I'm, nothing wrong visiting relatives at a graveyard. But at that moment, if you're in the graveyard and the rapture happens, the dead in Christ, are the grounds going to start opening up? Is the dirt going to start flying? The world calls this the zombie apocalypse. It's going to happen, but you're not going to come out wanting brains. That body's going to come out of that grave. Those bodies that were saved on the Titanic, the bodies that were saved in Lusitania, the bodies that have been saved in the U-boats and the American submarines that are laying at the bottom of the ocean, those bodies are coming up one day. You may blow a civilization away in as Hiroshima with a nuclear bomb. God's going to gather all those particles together, those that are saved. Those that are saved. Now let me get, I'm talking only about the saved person. If you, have, if you were murdered and you were chopped up and you were eaten as Jezebel was eaten, God's going to gather you back up. Now, there is a thing about with uh, cremation where it is the worship of false gods and all that. But I mean, if you can't afford it and you've been put in the trust of the state and that's what the state does, they cremate your body. God will gather you together, saved. One day, that trump's going to blow. Those that have died are going to come up. Now, dirt going to fly? That'd be interesting. And don't, don't go say, well, that'll be a testimony for people to get saved. No, it's not. Because the animals lined up, husband and wife, or male and female, walked into that art, a male giraffe, a female giraffe, Seven pairs of sheep walked into that thing. Two elephants, a male elephant and a female. They, they went on their own accord of God and no one else got into that ark. So the rapture is not going to change anybody's mind. The children of Israel, Exodus 20, Exodus 19, heard God speak from that mountain and you still had that 40 years in the wilderness of wandering because of disbelief. Now, if we were there, if we were at a funeral service, or we just stopped by or driving by uh, a, 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 a cemetery, we, and if we start seeing the dirt flowing up, if we hear a trump, we hear a shout, the rapture's happening. But we can't be scared. Because what's it say? The dead in Christ shall rise first. All right? There's only one person that finishes the race first. But there's a whole bunch of other people following that verse, unless it's a one-man race, and that's not typical. So, as far as the worldly church teaches today, the rapture is going to frighten many true Christians. 
They're going to see the bodies. They're going to have a commotion. <gasps> oh, man, we missed it. We missed it. The movie. Oh, oh, left behind. Oh, I didn't have it. Don't get worried. Because the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, then we which are alive. That's a semi, uh, that's a colon. How long is it between the dead that rise and those that are alive? I have no idea. It may be instant, it may be a month, it may be two months, who knows? So if the rapture happened right now, we dead Indians who were saved come out, start coming popping out of the ground, just sit here and relax. Because if you're saved, you will go if you're alive. Why do the dead get a break first? Not explain. Can't tell you. So, then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. All right. At the moment the rapture happens, here's what's going to happen. This I can tell you. The dead are going to rise. And then some point in time, which I don't know, those who are still alive and saved are going to go next. Your clothes and your blood and all that is going to be right where you are. That's the truth. All right. Your false teeth, your artificial knee, your repla your hip replacement, your dentures, the, the plate in your head. Anyway. Anything that's not natural to your body. Now, look at me. Kind of funny thing. And Tracy was me. I have somewhere a missing toe. I've had an amputation. My toe is going to meet up with my body again one day. Because that's part of me. But my false teeth, you're going to see a pair of false teeth. And Lord, if the Lord came right now, you're going to see my clothes, my wedding ring, our rings, our watches. Robbers will have a field day when the Christians go. They'll take our keys, take our cars, go home and rob us. It'll be a wonderful day of robbery. And it's even described as a thief in the night. So we go after the death. How quick? I don't know. All right? But... You know, you ever had that, 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 that queasy feeling in your stomach? I wonder if that's what it's going to be like. But, oh, and then next thing you know. Now watch, now watch, now watch. Together with them in the clouds, there's going to be a great church meeting coming up in the future. It's in those clouds. See those clouds? It will be all saved individuals from Peter, James, and John to the very last Christians that say there will be no lost people there. Amen. So I don't know, I, I can't explain this, but Peter knew who uh, Elisha and Moses was. If we're there in the clouds and we look around and we don't see dad or mom, they're not there. They were not saved. Okay. And we're going to see people in heaven and be like, wow, you're the last person I would think <laughs> to be here. So we're going to look for people we think who are not, and we're going to look at people who we did not think and are. But all born again Christians from this side of the resurrection are going to meet in the clouds one day. I'm afraid of heights, but I don't think I'll have a prayer anymore. And it ain't going to be raining Christians, we'll be going up. Enoch was raptured in the Bible. He's a type of the church. One day, he's there, and God said, I took him. And that's what he's going to do with us. He's going to take us. Mm -hmm. If the rapture happened right now, people are going to come over here and go, oh, look at pocketbooks and Bibles. and Oh, a nice camera. I can, get, I can take that down to the wow, poorest of people. Dollars. Look at their glasses. Oh, I want those false teeth will fit me. I need some teeth. Oh, some clothes. And where's the people? Where's the, I don't even think they're going to care. Really, the way the world is, I don't think they're going to care. And if you, like I said, if you go by a graveyard, if the graves are open, it's going to be freaky. They have in Orlando, uh, what was it called again? Um, zombie apocalypse store supply. There's stores all about this apocalypse. Well, they kind of hack it, right? So here we go. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Jesus is not coming back to this earth at that point. Here's what happens. The grave come out of the graves. We come out walking on this earth. We meet in the clouds. Saved. All saved. No loss. 
And then next thing you do, we look up from the clouds, we look towards the sky, and there's Jesus in the sky. And we go be with Him. That's when He becomes our groom. That's where His bride, He calls. And we do that wedding march from the clouds to Jesus. Da, 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 da. No, that's not it. <laughs> Oops, wrong one. Didn't mean to do that. But there it is. There it is. Meet the Lord in the air, not in the earth. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, what more security can you have with that? I mean, even after I was saved and reading the book of Revelation, which I should not have done first, I had those fears, well, what if I were the one-third of the angels that followed Satan? Which I can't. I didn't study other scriptures. Lies, if you hear somebody who's saved, don't have them open up the book of Revelation. That's the wrong place to go. Seriously, that's the wrong place to go for a new Christian. Gospel of John or 1 Thessalonians. First two, then get them in Genesis. All right. Forever to be with the Lord. That's it. But our crying doesn't stop at Revelation 21. We'll be crying at Revelation 20 at the Great White Zone. Good. All right, here we go. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right? Oh, life is just so horrible. I can't make, can't pay my bills. I'm just so... Brother, one day the Lord's coming. Amen. Well, what if you don't come during my time? Then you die, and he'll call you out of grave. Yep. Oh, Grandma died. Oh, this my life is so... What does he say? Yeah, she was saved. All right, she come, she's with the Lord today. Amen. And if they tell you you're not saved, and you get somebody like me, or somebody in question about salvation, then they hate you. But, I mean, if they're saved and they don't like that, hey, that's just the body you're looking at. That's just the body. That's not. They're not home no more. They're home with the Lord. That's right. And that's what that comfort. All right, go ahead, cry. Don't tell any Christian that was a Christian that died, oh, you ought not to be crying. I said, they've done it. I, I tell people all the time, there was a woman, when we first started going to church, her husband just died. So I said, you know what? Take those wonderful memories and build strong upon them. And you know what? I said, don't, and I told her, I said, listen, I, I've been through this with, with a spouse that died. The terrible memories, use it to repent to the Lord and get right. Amen. And you have a crying moment? I do. But don't go don't, overboard. Don't go, don't go running to the doctor. Get, you need strength in the Lord like that. There's hope. There's hope. So that's... There will be only Christians, no lost people, the true bride of Christ one day is going to meet in the, in the sky. Be no pretenders. And then forever to be with the Lord. Romans 12.5 At the moment of the rapture, and Tracy knows I have a few people that I don't know they're saved. Especially last week, last past week, I don't know. The rapture will proclaim if they were saved or not. There will be no lost people there. Romans chapter 12, verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, I don't know how many Christians there are. All members have not the same office. There are some preachers, some prayers, some people go out and witness, some people pass out tracts, some people preach on the street, some people knock on doors, some people sing better than others, some people, you know. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. And that will be that great... We are the one body right now. But oh, after the rapture, that one sinless perfected body, especially after we come out of the judgment seat of Christ. When we all walk away from the judgment seat of Christ and all our sins have been put through the fire Amen. and ashes and it's gone. Wonderful day that will be. We'll be the perfect body. We'll be the 10. No model or actress can beat what we're going to get through God. We'll all there'll be no schism, no cliques, nothing like that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.15. 1 Corinthians 6.15.
in the pages, but the wind was blowing them back. Yeah, I know. He, Got it. I'm trying. All right, there we go. First Corinthians 6, 15. Know ye not, that means you should know this. Mm -hmm. Many don't. That your bodies are the members of Christ. More so when we get to the rapture. No lost people. Amen. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that... He which is joined to a harlot is one body. When that woman, when that woman, Jesus met, well, he says, listen, you don't have a husband, you have four husbands. When flesh joins flesh, that's a marriage in the Bible. That's right. So, you're not to join your body as a Christian with the world or with Satan. That's adultery. That's right. You're not to sell yourself out to the world. For two, says he, shall be one flesh. That's marriage. That's what Jesus said. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth without the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. What? Look at Paul. What? Know ye not your body is the temple, the Holy Ghost, which is in you. The Holy Ghost is in us. We are the temple. You don't go to the temple. You are the temple. Now, are you a clean temple? Or are you a filthy temple? Are you a temple that loves the world and Satan? Or are you a temple that loves God? Which ye are of God, and ye are not your own. I'm not mine. God bought me. For you are bought with a price. Acts 20, 28 says, the blood of God. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So we belong to God. And at the rapture, God's going to call us home. And like I said, when we meet in the clouds, there will be all saved people. There will be no lost people. You cannot stop that man from going up in the rapture if he's saved, we read in Thessalonians. If we are gods, we're going back to God. We're going to be with God forever, the Bible said. First Corinthians 7, 4. Now we're looking, we're going through the rapture, we're looking at that body again. The body that we're the sons of God. We're the bride of Christ. We're going to be raptured. Now, here's the body of believers. Only those that are saved. Right now, people who are not part of the body can join the body by their faith and belief in the baptism, Amen. I mean, the, in, the, uh, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They can become part of the body. That's how you do it. 1 Corinthians 7, 4. The wife has not power, the wife has not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. We don't have power over our body, though we do. We're supposed to give it, 1 Corinthians 7, 4, we're supposed to give it to Christ. And yet, when you talk about a body, you know, if there's an aftershave lotion that I wear and my wife don't like it, she tells me, no, don't wear that. I'm not to wear it. Oh, okay. And my wife says, well, I'm going to cut my hair short. I say, no, you're not. She's not to cut it short. And yet the church today will make up themselves like Jezebel, who is not of God. The church will dance filthy dances. They'll sing and put in their ears filthy music that does not belong to the body of Christ. Christ has set forth by His Word. This is what I want you to do, sweetheart. This is what I want you to do, my love. And what He tells us to do is never opened by Christians. So many Christians are going to be judged by not doing what our Savior told us to in God. And we're not our own. God bought us. Amen. Keep your hands off my body. If you're a Christian, ain't your body. You didn't redeem yourself. Not of works leaves any man both. But by grace are you saved through faith. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 16.
We are the sons of God. We are the bride of Christ. And we're one body. And we looked into that a little bit last week. And there are some churches. Now, this is not, this, this is not discipline. If a Christian is involved in a serious sin, there's discipline in the church. Yes. But on the other hand, there are churches who will not let people go in because they're not like them. Mm -hmm. William and Claire Booth were taken aside by the Church of England into the office and said, we don't want you to bring those filthy, rotten vagabonds into our church. They brought in one day all the whores. The they brought all the drunks, all the homeless into the church one day, Church of England. Can't have those kind of people here in this church. And that happens in the church today. So they went and started their own. We cannot say to a person in the church, you know, just because I don't like you, you're not part of us. That's wrong. That's right. Amen. Now you may dismiss them from your church, but you have not dismissed them from the body of Christ. So, uh, chapter 10. No, what did I say? Chapter 10, verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. And what more so will be at the rapture? At the rapture, when we are in the clouds, there is no more leaven. It's gone. So, my wife is saved. I see her in the clouds. It will be truly, true love forever. Aww. Now, if you've got a husband and wife, one's saved, one's not saved, it's not true love forever. According to what we read in Thessalonians, forever would be with the love, the Lord. Mm -hmm. The love. God is love. So that rapture is not going to break us from the body. It's going to separate us from the sheep and from the goat. No unbelievers will be called in the raptures. And when we're in the clouds and we go be with the Lord, we're one body. No more cliques. No more envying. Oh, you know, I wish he wasn't there. I wish that family wasn't there. I wish, no. Not more people like me here. And you might find those people like that are not at the rapture. So we're going to be one true body together. Without sin. No more romancing in the back sleep of the, of the world and Satan. Amen. That point when we're called out, we'll no more adulterate ourselves against Jesus, which we've had. And Jesus Christ is going to clean up his bride. Here, hon, let's, let's go to the judgment seat of Christ. Let's clean off that, that filthiness. Let's put it to the fire. Let's put it to the test. That which is sin and rottenness is going to burn away. It's going to add. Amen. That which remains will be rewards and crowns. And then when he presents us to the Father, here's my beautiful bride. Without sin, without spot, without wrinkle, according to him. Can't present us like that. To, that's why I think at the rapture, I th this is my belief now. I could be wrong. I believe at the moment of the rapture is the judgment seat of Christ. Because God, he, Jesus is not going to bring us to God. Not with my sins. Because there are sins right now that are not under the blood. Amen. Me too. There are sins under the blood, but not all. So I believe at the rapture, and I can't prove this, I believe at that moment, when we go see the Christ, we see him at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, I've heard some people say the judgment seat of Christ is when we die. It can't be. Because Paul is still getting crowns for people getting saved by the book of Romans. Peter is still getting credit. If the Lord tarries, if I, if I died right now, all right, if I was to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ right now in my death, what if somebody picked up a gospel check that I left in the bathroom yesterday somewhere and got saved? Wow, amen. That's how you refuse. After you die, this does not stop your ministry. Now, Jehovah, I mean, not Je oh, gee, I'm saying the wrong words. There. The Salvation Army is a perfect example. Though they've gone sorrow, but many years after yeah. the booths died, they were still doing good. Now today is a complete flop. But I guarantee somewhere, maybe somewhere in the Salvation Army unit, there's someone who's actually doing right by the Word of God. And he's not going with the programs, but he's doing by the, by the foundation of the booth. And there may be some people getting saved by that. But the booths are denied a crown because they were judged at the judgment. No. 
Again, and all that will be at the rapture if you're saved or lost. If you're not there, you're lost. And there's nothing you can do about it. If you're there, you're saved. And no matter how much people cry, oh, I don't think that person would be there. So I don't know what kind of attitude we had because we're not at the judgment seat of Christ yet until afterwards. So Ephesians 3.6. Ephesians 3.6. What do you hope for? I hope the rapture happens. But if it doesn't, all right, I don't need to worry. I'm still going to be with the Lord after the body present with the Lord. All right? And listen, anybody who wants to desire the rapture, I'm one of them. I'm not going to say I'm the only one. But I'm not really sure, but let me give me a good safe date. If April 1st, 1987, the rapture happened, I would be still here on this earth. We'd be in tribulation period right now, seven years. But it wouldn't be. Yeah, I, could, I, would, I would die, gone through the tribulation period, lost, and gone into hell. I was saved the 21st. Mm -hmm. oh. So when we cry, baby, because the rapture hasn't, t hasn't happened today, there's a lost man out there, the long-suffering God. He's not willing that any should perish. The rapture has not happened today because of the long-suffering of God. There are still people out there who need to be saved, who need to be told how to be saved. And if you wake up one more day out of your bed, it's not so you can go hunky-punky with the world and do -si do with Satan and all that. It's for you to be a Christian and go tell the lost people about Jesus Christ and not about anything else but Jesus. You may witness and have the last Christian get saved in that moment, the rapture get called up. How's that? How'd you like to have that guy bow his head truly and say, Lord God, I, 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 whatever this guy says, I want to believe. I'm... At that moment he says, Amen, you hear that trump, and it's like, whoa. Amen. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3, 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, Partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. By the gospel where it's and when, and when Paul's telling those Jews who hate Gentiles, guess what? You know those people you hate? If they got the gospel, they're in Christ, you're gonna go, they're gonna go up with you. I mean to the Gentile, I mean to the Jews that the Gentiles there is like you stepped in dog poop. Oh, you gotta take that with us? Ugh. But Jew or Gentile, male or female. We are the body of Christ by Amen. the gospel. Don't go be preaching about the revelation, the antichrist. Don't be showing movies by faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word. We're going to have a fellowship. Bring all your friends and your family. That don't do nothing. That just fats them up. Imagine, imagine someone going to a church fellowship. They don't hear the gospel. They choke on the chicken bone. They die. All oh, they've been plumped up to go in hell. Ridiculous. Chapter 4, verse 4, Ephesians. Some people need to think like God's giving me a brain to think. Ephesians 4, 4. There is one body, one spirit, capital S, even at... Wait, wait, wait a minute, let's stop here for a minute. Let's stop here for a minute. Let me go a little bunny trail if I may. There is one body, one spirit, correct? 76 Bibles. Does that sound correct? You would think God that had one body, one spirit, one God, one Savior, one Jesus. You would think he would have one Bible. That's end of commercial break. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Okay, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father all. And we talked about earlier about cliques. We're saved. We're all together. We're one. Amen. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's written that, hey, you're to rejoice with them that rejoice, and you're to, you're to weep with them that weep. I, I get things, you know, pray for this person on this family. I, I pray for them. Some of them I put more priority. Some of them, you know, it's family. Just as much as if I were to say, hey, will you pray for something that I have? One body, and that one day, that whole entire body is going to bring. You're going to see Paul. And he's not going to be having his jaw hanging down and his yeah. brains half caved in. Matter of fact, when Paul died, his head was over there and his body was over there. 
God's going to... I mean, do you think Paul's going to walk around in heaven carrying his head? That's horror movies. Well, John the Baptist wouldn't be up in the rapture because he wasn't in the church. He'd be the, he'd be the, the guest of the bride. This would be from Calvary to Amen. the rapture. There have been Christians that have been burned to death. You think they're going to be walking around here? <laughs> no, they're going to be full body. By the way, we read the other day, right. last week, we'll be like Christ. Ephesians uh, 4.12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We are the sons of God, remember? We are the bride of Christ, remember? We are also the body of Christ. How do you look? How do you present yourself to God in the world? Uh, I, I, like I said, I don't tell jokes, and this is not as a joke telling. This is a fairy tale story. It's not real, but I think it shows a good expression of what we're learning now. It was this. It was, it was in this bar one night, and there was this massive brawl. I mean, guns bullets, broken beer bottles, chairs, knives, chains. And after that all cleared up, Satan comes down. He takes this young woman's soul. He grabs this one woman's soul. She's dead on the ground. Mm. The angel comes out. Now, they said, this is not true, but this is a good illustration. The angel comes out and said, leave that soul alone. That's God's. He said, no, 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 no. She's in my place. She's with my people. The angel says, listen, I I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Look at that soul that's in your hand. And he looks at that soul. He said, well, gee, it is God's. But man, she sure acted like my people. How do you act before the world? What do you stand for? What kind of testimony do you give being in the body of Jesus Christ? I mean, are you a piece of body that's been affected, de de defeated, de disgraced, that ought to be amputated, but you can't because you're forever Christ? Are you a diseased part of the body? Or are you a living part of the body? Verse 16, same chapter. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working the measures of every part, make an increase of the body, make an increase in the body. We're supposed to be out there witnessing unto the edifying of itself in love. Our body has parts that go to other parts. We have a bloodstream. That bloodstream is to go through all the body. We have nerves that go through all the body. We have an oxygen system in our body. That's what we're to be as the body of Christ. We'll all be working for the healthiness of the body. Oh, this person's in the hospital. Oh, Lord God, please. You ought to be aching like your brain sends messages to the body. I don't care about anything in this body. There is a big boo-boo down there and it hurts. Everybody get upset. I had a doctor tell me, he said, when you get nervous, your nerves are connected to your stomach directly. So when you get nervous, you get that easy feeling in your stomach. That's your body saying, something's wrong. We ought to be like that when a Christian is down or upset. Wait a minute. Okay, put everything off to the side. We're one body. we got to work together. we got to get that part of our body healed under comfort. Well, not be taking out the scalpel, get rid of them. They're not like us. That's, that's not the case. Uh, I hope this is 5, chapter 23. I mean, 5, verse 23. Mm -hmm. 5, 23. I got miserable handwriting. <laughs> chapter 5, 23, Ephesians. For the husband is the head of the wife. That's not believed today in the church and in the world, but the church, we're talking about Christians. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of that body. And we talked about, it was last week or a couple weeks ago, we talked about the marriage is a type of the relationship of the Christian to Jesus Christ. We are his bride. He is the ultimate husband to take care of his bride. But we, as the bride of Christ, I mean, we go sleeping around with anything but Jesus. We profane ourselves. Amen. But there's that one body, and the direction of that body is Christ is our head. 
Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? Where do you want me to go? Where don't you want me to go? Is this what you want me to wear? Is this what you don't want me? Is this proper for me to wear? Is this proper for me to do as ambassador, your wife before you? We thought more about Jesus, the whole body. You know, one person in one church can make that whole church smell vile and wicked. You could be a poor testimony of your good church. That ought not to be so. One, app, one bad apple ruins the whole crop. Uh, verse 30, chapter 5, verse 30. Now again, this is no lost people. This is all saved Christians. For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. Well, we don't want them people here members of our church. I'm saved. Too late. I am a member of the church. I am a member of Jesus Christ, the body of the church. So what do you say? Oh, you want to be a member of a church. I am. Which church is that? Jesus Christ. When was the last time you sat down with people to teach the Bible on a Wednesday afternoon or Thursday afternoon? When you try to edify someone with the Word of God? See, we go back to what we talked about last week. Some people think that church is a brick, stone, rock, wood. No, it's a group of believers. Anytime, wherever they are gathered together, two or three people in the name of Jesus, there he is. Amen. What if your church fails? What do you do if your church fails? And when you go, you got to go to a church, really? Not everybody has a church to go to. So, Philippians chapter 3, 21. These I, I tried to do in order. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to. Sometimes you can. Sometimes, you know, you got to have that one verse. That's got, but I mean, when, when I can go from left to right in the books in the Bible, I will do it. So it would be easier. And always remember uh, Colossians, Ephesians, no, uh, Galatians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Col Colossians. Grandpa eats popcorn. That always makes me remember. There you go. Philippians 3.21. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. This rules out the, the zombie apocalypse of Christians. You ready? Who shall change our vile body? That's saved or lost, you know. You know what happens if you take a human body you don't wash it? You know what this human body is with sin? It's vile. You know what a dead body is when it's been sitting for a long time? It's vile. So this is saved or lost. I mean, excuse me. We'll talk about this is alive or dead. Excuse me. Whether we're dead in Christ or we're alive in Christ. Who shall change our vile body? That it may be fashioned. Oh, there's fashion. There's a fashion statement. Like unto His glorious body. We're going to have a body like Jesus Christ. Now, what was that body? Thomas, reach your finger and thrust it in my side and, and touch me. Notice that, you know, flesh and blood. They saw, they touched the resurrected Jesus Christ. And in his body, he still has the scars. Somewhere the other day, someone said, well, Pot was not written, but it, we don't know if those scars are on his forehead still from the thrones. Thorns. We don't know. But we know they're in the hands, we know they're in the feet, we know it's in his side. They touched and, and beheld him. They, they held him by his feet. So when we get raptured, when we go to glory, we're going to have our feet, we're going to have our eyes, we're going to have our hands, we're going to have our body. It's going to be like Jesus Christ, the fashion of Jesus Christ, without the marks. As much as that rich man went into hell and had a tongue, had eyes, able to speak. When you die, you get a sinless, perfected body that will never break down again. 
like unto his glorious part, body, according to the working whereof he is able even to do all things unto himself. So we're going to get a new body. Amen. You can have a new body that will be tormented for in hell forever. You can have a beautiful, glorious body to praise God in Jesus Christ. Amen. You'll sing forever. You'll never get a dry throat. And you'll never hit an off key. And when we go over the book of Psalms and we say, make a joyful noise, we'll probably look at that like, what does that mean? Because there will be no noise. It will be all glorious and wonderful. Colossians 1.18. Colossians 1.18. And to think that Jesus spoke more about hell and not to go there than what the glory we're speaking about in heaven. God's death benefits are out of this world through Jesus Christ. Talk about a health care plan. You don't ever get sick. Amen. There are no hospitals. There's no problems with your brain. There's no problems with your liver. There's no problems with your lungs. By Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body. So we've seen this again. One day, Jesus Christ is going to be permanent over us. Even though we're sinless perfection, there's still, you see, there's still that rulership. We're still under Jesus, even though we're in glory in heaven. How are your works going to... It's ridiculous. And he's the head of the body. So what's the body? The church. It's not... Bricks, stones. It's not your elite clique of people. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? Those that have been raised from the dead that died in Christ. Lazarus died. He was resurrected. He died again. Moses is going to be resurrected. He's going to die again. And he's going to be raptured. That little boy, that, or that young man that was coming from Nain, that was in the coffin, the beer, he rose from the dead. He died again. Those in the church who are raptured are going to come up. They died. Those that died in Christ are sleeping in Christ. They're never going to die again. Firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have a preeminence. Come on. Is Jesus Christ really a preeminence today? Really? Come on. And if you find somebody said, yes, he is, you say 386-405-9776. You call, have them call me, I'll tell him he's a liar personally. And Tracy knows I have done that to these people. I will call them a liar to their face. I will enjoy it with a great big smile on my face. Because the first commandment is God first all the time. Sorry. Amen. When Peanut woke me up this morning, I was not thinking about joyfully in God. I was thinking about, I want to go back to sleep. <laughs> that was a weird alarm clock sound I had this morning to wake up. I wasn't thinking about God. <laughs> so, chapter 2, verse 17. Still in Colossians, yep. Colossians 2, 17. We don't put God first all the time. When we get to glory, it will be always God first. So we're looking at today, we're looking at the rapture, now we're looking at the body of Jesus Christ. You know we're one body. Unity. This is what the world tries to do, you know. Try to get what Jesus Christ is going to give us. But they do it with sin. There is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. So they're never going to get that unity. So Colossians 2.17 Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Is of Christ. That body you have, the church assembly, is Jesus Christ. The church only, Lord, what we're going to do in the assembly today, do you approve of it or don't you approve of it? What do you think? Oh, I know what I know what God would say to that. I got it written down in Revelation 3. <laughs> That's what he says of it. Wow. 
Imagine, imagine some of these churches, if you were to tell them that's what God thinks of them, they kick you out. You're not a member of this church. Get out. Uh, that was chapter 3, verse... Chapter 3, verse 15, same Colossians. I had, I had an evangelist one time, I knew, well, I who know him. He went in this church, preached Sunday morning like he was supposed to out of the King James Bible. At the end of the service, they gave him they gave him 25 bucks that he collected in the plate and said, you're not coming back here tonight. You don't belong here. Because he preached the truth. Yeah. I've heard other evangelists go into churches and the collection money say, we're taking it. You don't deserve it. Get out of here. Mm. Imagine telling a Christian that you're not allowed here. And it happens. I've been in them. But it does. I sat in the church one time and I told him, I said, listen, the Lord's called me to preach. I'm, I need to go somewhere and learn how to preach. Oh, not you. And they called someone else. That guy's a fruitcake today. That guy's not doing anything for the Lord today. And here I am. I guess that church was wrong. I went back to that church. I was not. I was allowed to be there, but I was not a part of them. Because, you know, me, nasty. My family tries to put me away because I'm in the Bible. He's not part of us, no more. Talk bad about me. I don't care. It's the Bible. Colossians 3.15 Let the peace of God rule in your heart. That's a peace that won't go away. To the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. America doesn't even do that once a year anymore. They don't even do it on Christmas. I remember when, all the wonderful gifts my mom would give me on Christmas, unsafe boy and all that. Today we've seen videos, they screaming and hollering, that's not what I wanted, that's not the thing I wanted. Christians are not thankful. Christians are not thankful. So, the church is not a place, it's a people. And there are some people, oh, you got a living room church. If you're there gathered together with the Lord, two or three people trying to serve the Lord, trying to edify Christians and grow in the Lord and witness, you're a church. That's true. It's not just any people, it's saved people. Matthew 18 20. Matthew 18 20. And they'll do that too. I mean, they'll slyly kind of reference that if you're not in their church building, in their assembly, you're an outcast. I've been in them churches too. Let's look what this is red letter if you got a red letter Bible, Matthew 18, 20. So that means Jesus. You ever wonder why it's red letter? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. For where two or three, one, two, three, four. Someone will probably say it's four, not two or three. So I bet you someone will probably teach that somewhere. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is seated at this table right now? Where is he? He didn't say you were going to see him. He says, I am there. How about John 1.1? 1, 1? In the beginning was the word. How about, he's right here. There's four of them here at this table right now. So as a Christian family to God, we are the sons of God. We are the sons-in-law of God. Because are we not the bride of Jesus? And Jesus is the son of God. So God is not only our father, he's our father-in-law. How's that? Amen. Where did Cain get his wife? <laughs> he got it from his father-in-law. <laughs> Where did Jesus get his, his wife? From his father-in-law. He created us. How's that? <laughs> Throw that in, in their face. They'll go crazy. He is our father. Amen. To Christ, we are his bride. And the marriage is yet to come. And then next week, we'll look at the church is not a building. We'll look at the meetings. We'll look at the first place. We'll look at where and how the church meets. It'll be unlike what the world teaches. 
Lord God, I just hope you were welcome. Because Lord, I, I would be foolish to say that you are allowed in every church. But Revelation 3 says you stand at the door knocking on the church. And Lord God, I just pray that you be here and be welcome and enjoy. Lord God, that our sins have tarnished us. And you have washed us by the blood of the Lord, by your blood shed on Calvary's hill. Lord God, I just pray the next place we meet, Lord, be to your favor, Lord, that we can build something down here. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.